Hey, hello there. This is going to be the second part of the image from icons tutorial. Uh, this is going to be a build tutorial. The tutorial that we do, did previously was about the uh, image from icons or image from instances uh, on a system on how you can uh, create patches and then populate these patches with different icons. But this system is going to be more automatic and it will take an image and then fill it based on the uh, grayscale with different elements or symbols or icons or whatever you want to put in. So as you can see here, I generated this image of a uh, guy with a hat and X and it's being uh, uh, created by all these uh, type symbols. So here you see a comma, you see a star, you see a plus sign and uh, brackets. And if we go over here into the geometry nodes, here I created it into this one uh, node group. You can get both of these systems on uh, Blender Market, uh, but I'm gonna show you also how to build this one. As you can see here, we have uh, the collection of symbols. Uh, I have also a collection of 3D objects, which are more 3D, as you can see here. It's like toruses, boxes, uh, spheres, and uh, cones. And they all have their own density. And with that density, you can easily create like the grayscale image. So, but let's go back to the symbols. And now it's set to random. I have made a grid. Here you can see what it looks like in a grid. Uh, I also have a diagonal grid. So now the grid is, uh, it actually takes all the vertices of the grid that we are making. And if we say scale and scale it down a bit, let's say zero one. Here you can see uh, what I recommend you to do with this system to start uh, to start off. If you go into the symbols, here are the symbols. I turn them off. I uh, organize them by the density. So if you have uh, the at symbol, it's quite dense. It has a lot of black. Uh, if you go to the and symbol, it has a bit less black. Uh, this is even less. So in this way, it's like building up the grayscale. And also make sure that in your uh, collection folder, that the uh, how they build up is also in density. So on the top is the most dense one, and in the bottom is the least dense one. So here you can see that it builds up in how much black there is in the symbol. And if we turn this one off, we go to the image system. Here you can see, like, okay, the black is the darkest, uh, fills the bottom, or the at fills the darkest spots and the points fill the lightest spots. And that's why the image still works. Like, you don't uh, have to do it, because there's also here a color option, toggle color. And if I go into um, random, so it's more filled and then maybe go back to the bigger icons here you can see it takes the color of the image so then you don't need to take into account the density of the symbols so you can fill it with add symbols all the way and then uh, oh, we can uh, do that let's uh, show you how that looks uh, not a torus symbols i copy this one uh, shift D, put it in collection 6. And if I now go into the system and I say symbols, collection 6, now it takes the add symbol. You see it's all add symbols. And go to one. And it's still visible what the image does. Now if we toggle the color to blue, now you don't see anymore that there's a guy there. So you can use, uh, use this system in both ways. So if we go back into the symbols with the density, we can still see the guy there. But let's leave, uh, leave it to this at uh, this moment. 
go back to a higher density. Um, here we can see my program that you have an X dimension, you have a Y dimension, so you can stretch the image. Uh, the resolution, so now uh, it's taking a random uh, grid. So here we can say the in-between space. If I say 5, it has a bigger in-between space. Say 10, see that even more space in between of the symbols. Going back to 2, and here I can set the density of how many I want. And put it to 500. So this is about the random choice. Uh, if you choose grid or diagonal grid, it won't take these values. You also have um, remove random, so you can remove random ones. So it looks a little bit more uh, messy, which can be nice if you use a lot of uh, wiggly things like this. You have a random rotation, you can set that also to zero, and then you can make more computerized look if you do grid like this, as if someone has coded this image or diagonal grid you can still see it um, let's go back to grid so with this you can set uh, how much random rotation they have uh, in angle and minus angle so it goes back and forth and then also we have a random scale so you can scale them randomly if you need to and we have a max value and a minus value. Remove random. We have a seed also. And we can also just pick a color if we want to change that. Make it in a particular color. So that's how this tool works. Um, I now use these images which I created. You can choose the image here. If I take the portrait of the woman, here you see that it still works with all the symbols. And if we uh, go in to show you if you want to build it yourself, it's quite easy. Like uh, we take the collection, we get the domain size, we subtract one, we plug them into a map range. We did do this to uh, automatically calculate the amount of objects in the folder. So if you have this symbols folder, uh, there's now uh, about eight nine symbols in there but if you put more and you want a bigger range of for uh, to create a grayscale or a smaller range like it's calculated here automatically so uh, then we take the image here and we take the uv map and we plug it into the vector uh, we make it a grayscale and we plug that into the map range and there uh, is being calculated here we have a uh, threshold. The, what does the threshold value do? Yeah, you can change a little bit uh, the grayscale gray of the image. And like it's here in a mix value from 0.001 to 2.5. And the threshold goes from 1 to 0. If we toggle this here, you can see that it works this way. Uh, we plug that into the max and this way you also have control over uh, the grayscale of the image where the density starts and ends then what we have here this is the grid actually where everything is projected on uh, we store the uh, uv map and i use the uv map here i could also just connect this one to here and then it works the same uh, but I don't want to have these long connections, so I store it and then use it here. Um, then we have here th uh, menu item for the three option. Uh, you have the mesh to point, which is this uh, grid. I have a diagonal grid when I use the edges and I have the random grid when I use the point distribution. So when you choose random, you see here these two values, the random grid. Uh, distance and density that you can uh, change then here we go into the uh, instance on points so we use the collection of uh, symbols and it's projected on the grid that we created here and then the uh, 
in or the symbol that is picked is decided by this instance index that we calculate here as i just showed you we pick an instance make sure that you say here separate children and position relative i also have a center geometry which is not really needed because i centered all my symbols uh, here you can see what is inside if you want to recreate it you can use this for other geometry as well um, here we can set the scale of the symbols and the rotation is being calculated over here and you can set a random rotation i multiply it by minus one so the rotation goes uh, in the plus and the minus uh, at the same time and here it picks a random value makes radians from them uh, and then here it comes into the piece so that does the rotation then here we have scale instances so you can set them minus and max uh, random scale and here we have translate instances uh, by index don't do yeah we do a translation in the z axis so they never overlap so if we look here we go into it no actually this is set to zero we don't really need to use this you don't have to make it as well and then here we do the random uh, instance we delete instances and then take a random value and then you can make a boolean and then take the amount that you want we plug it into the group input so that's what this slider is for remove random then we set the material of the instances and we store the color of the image so here the image comes in with the switch uh, you can change it to the color that you pick so it's either blue or when you toggle it it's the color of the image uh, we send the color of the image to the store named attribute and if we go into shading then go to object here's the shader attribute you set it to instance and name it color so it's referring to this one color also instance it just takes the color of the of the image here you can set it to pick your own color but you can also just use the color here and that's how it's done in the in the color shader so if we go in here you see instance color that's this material so you can also set the metallic roughness anything you want but basically this is what you need to create this tool i hope everything is clear and uh, if you need this tool uh, quickly you can just buy it from blender market together with the other tool that we already spoke about in the previous tutorial so i hope this is useful and uh, see you in the next one okay bye